So, it's been an interesting couple of days. We've had a lot going on with the family, with my husband's work, me trying to, you know, get, get started on a new project, and I have been having so much improvement in a lot of my back pain, body pain, because of the body braid and stuff, but... There are some things that it can't it can't fix, <laughs> you know, like nerve damage that you have already, is, you know, created and, you know, and, and things. And we have amazing body braid systems, but um, I have a lot of cervical damage. <laughs> and, you know, we, there's nothing created for that just yet. And I had been waiting nine months, the majority of which in major agony until I got the body braid and discovered how much it's been able to help. And in six of those months, begging my doctors for fresh scans because I have a history of major spine injuries. And I even have a congenital, like I was born with, congenital narrowing of my spinal canal. Like even when I was healthy, even before things got bad, okay, there was no extra room, all right? The spinal cord was already touching the, the, I mean, the, 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 the um, disc was already pressing in and just about touching and putting pressure on the spinal cord. <laughs> I'd wonder, I'll just tell me, if you sneeze the wrong way, you're going to be paralyzed <laughs> for life, right? So I've always been trying to be very careful about that since I discovered that. And I've been having, you know, the low back pain, but I have had permanent nerve damage issues in my arms and hands for many years as well. <laughs> But it was getting worse. Now it's not just the outside of my hands; it's on the inside too. It's my thumb and my forefinger, my my pointer, and and um, I'm I'm losing more functioning in my hands. So I've been begging for scans. Finally, they're gonna schedule them. Oh well, there's nothing available till mid February. This was like December. Okay, I get resources, supply, demand, staffing. Oh, okay. All right, I can make it. Uh, today was my supposed to be my MRIs. I was so, you know, it's kind of sad when you get excited about like imaging and scans so that you can hopefully get answers so that then you can be like, all right, well, this is the problem. This is what we can do to either help it. This is how we don't make it worse. This is your options, right? I am a person that needs information. I need that knowledge. I don't care what the answer is. It can be super devastatingly sad. I need the answers for my own mental well-being. I was so excited. Get there. Get checked in. Oh, yeah. No, it's only for your lumbar. Well, I do have major lumbar issues and I'm losing functioning in my legs on some days. Yes, that's true. But I can't even use a cane if I can't use my freaking hands. Or I can't push myself in a wheelchair if I can't use my freaking hands. <laughs> and I didn't think it was going to upset me that much. I was like, oh, there was another mistake. Somebody screwed up again. Okay. It's going to be another six months before I can get in for more scans. After I notify the doctor that somewhere along the line, somebody messed up. It just hit me all of a sudden. It, it, it just, I'm in the middle of the MRI tube, bawling my eyes out, trying to hold still so I don't ruin my lumbar scans at least. And then I get out and they're like, are you, are you in pain? Are you okay? I'm like, <laughs> and, and then, <laughs> and I'm like on the verge of like hysterics of disappointment and just frustration. And, and you know, it's even better. I'm walking out of the hospital and I'm heading back towards my car, and I didn't have my body braid or anything today because it, you know, I do need to wash it occasionally, and it's drying. And <laughs> so, you know, to help with my balance and stuff, especially there's a, a hill and a lot of hills and stuff. My fucking cane breaks in the middle of me going down the side of the walk. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm in like the, that like, I have gone mad at her. I, I have been trying so hard not to get mad at the people whose fault it's not. It's not the MRI tech's fault. It is not the fault of the, the doctor who is putting in the request and saying that I need this. And, and it's somewhere along the line that gets denied or messed up. It is not the fault of those that are trying their best to do their jobs and actually help people. 
but <laughs> I am so tired of trying to be positive about it and trying to be, that's okay. You know, it's all right. It'll be okay. I'll find a way. I'll get along, you know, <laughs> I'm getting so tired of staying positive about it. And I have gone mad at her loopy because <laughs> I can't stop laughing almost hysterically as I'm crying almost hysterically. <laughs> I just, <laughs> and I did almost didn't want to post this video, but I know that there are a lot of people out there that kind of hit this point too, that kind of really struggle with that like level of frustration and disappointment because you get hopeful and excited. <laughs> and then this <laughs> happens. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> mental health is important. <laughs> my mental health appointment yesterday but for all of the the crap that has happened happened <laughs> and I was doing really good because <laughs> as I'm looking through my records oh they've also denied several requests from several of my specialists for different treatments to avoid putting more drugs in my system so I can preserve some sense of I don't know organ function for the rest of my life because I'm only in my mid-30s but, you know, nope, nope, those other treatments were denied because we haven't tried enough drugs yet. <laughs> and it's not my doctor's fault. It is this freaking health system and how it's designed and how it's written and how supply and demand work with it and how you must go through it. And now, granted, you need to have prereqs or stuff gets abused horribly. But <laughs> it's like it gets to a point where medicine can't even, you know, doctors can't even practice freaking medicine effectively. <laughs> they can't even do what they need to do to help their patients because, oh, well, you haven't damaged your body enough yet. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> So to all those medical professionals that are working so hard <laughs> to do the best that they can do to help people and they get crapped on for the medical gaslighting, which is legitimate and does happen to a lot of people because not all medical professionals are created equally. <laughs> To those that are taking the heat for those that aren't doing their jobs or for those that are taking the heat for the shortfalls in our ridiculous health system. <laughs> it's not your fault. <laughs> and I really do appreciate and thank each and every one of you for the effort I see you putting in and the time that you take with us. <laughs> and I understand that you guys have your own share of frustrations and battles because you're fighting the side with the patients and the medical system. So to my other spoonies, <laughs> let's all go mad at her. And to my healthcare professionals that are actually trying, <laughs> we see you <laughs> and I do appreciate you. So I'm going to probably log off before I go any more loco. And uh, I don't know, maybe see if I can fix my case. <laughs>